Number 14, this figure over here shows an overhead view of three horizontal forces acting on a cargo canister that was initially stationary but now moves across a frictionless floor. The force magnitudes are F1 equals to 3 newtons, F2 equals to 4 newtons, and F3 equals to 10 newtons. And the indicated angles are theta 2 equals to 50 degrees and theta 3 equals to 35 degrees. What is the net work done on the canister by the three forces during the first 4 meters of displacement? So let's remember that the work can be calculated doing the dot product between the forces and the displacement and this is equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them and the trick here is for you to notice that since the canister is initially stationary when you the, the resultant forces let, let's say the resultant forces let's call it fr is equal to f1 plus f2 plus f3 so the resultant forces here points to the same direction as the displacement let's suppose that the resultant forces points to this direction over here the displacement will point to the same direction as the resultant forces so this angle over here is zero and the cosine of zero is one. So the work is simply the magnitude of the forces, the resultant forces times the magnitude of the displacement. The magnitude of the displacement we already have, which is four meters. And the magnitude of the resultant forces we don't have. So we have to calculate this value over here and the magnitude of the resultant forces is the sum of the magnitude of the sum of each forces each force so if you want to do this we have to decompose each forces so for example f1 in the x direction is equal to the magnitude of f1 times the cosine of this angle over here which is 180 degrees which gives us minus f1 the y direction the y component of f1 is equal to f1 times the sine of this angle over here which is 180 and this is zero so this is zero so our vector f1 is equal to minus f1 in the i direction vector f2 the component of f2 in the x direction is equal to f2 times the cosine of this angle over here so these are going to be let's see it is 270 so let's let, so this is 270 degrees and this purple angle over here is 270 minus theta 2 which is equal to 50 degrees so the angle is 220 degrees so this is called the cosine of 220 degrees you, you don't have to do this calculation right now and the y component of the second vector is equal to the magnitude of the vector times the sine of 220 degrees as for the third vector the x component is the magnitude of the vector times this angle this angle is already correct so it is 35 degrees the cosine of 35 degrees and the y component it is sine of 35 degrees okay so what are we going to do now we're going to sum everything up then so the resultant forces in the x direction is equal to f1x plus f2x plus f3x which is equal to minus f1 plus f2 
to cosine of 220 plus F3 cosine of 35 degrees and this gives us let's see 2.13 newtons the y component of the resultant force is equal to F1y plus F2y plus F3y which is equal to 0 plus F2 sine of 220 degrees plus F3 sine of 35 degrees and this gives us let's see 3.17 newtons okay now we have to calculate the magnitude of vector f r which is the resultant force so the magnitude of f r is equal to the square root of each component squared so this gives us the square root of 2.13 squared plus 3.17 squared and this gives us roughly 3.82 newtons okay now we can just apply this value to this equation over here so the work is just 3.82 times 4 which gives us 15.3 joules and that's it